finding the constant of proportionality from a table and writing it as an equation. This sounds ridiculously hard, but it's really not. And I'm gonna give you a strategy in order to learn this that I use with all of my students. And then I'm going to talk to you about all the vocabulary that goes with finding the constant of proportionality and linear equations, because there's a ton of it. So let's start with my strategy. The first thing that we have to understand with a proportional relationship is that it will always start at the origin. It will always start at zero. And what you want to look at in your table is count backwards from the numbers that they gave you. So if I look at my X column, I have four, three, two, one. Well, I'm counting backwards by ones. The next number after one would be zero. Also, in the Y column, I'm going from 60 to 45, which means I subtracted 15. 45 to 30, which I subtracted 15. 30 to 15, and 15, if I subtract 15 more, would give me again zero. So I have the ordered pair zero, zero, as you can see. And you should know that all of these in the table are ordered pairs. 115 is just the ordered pair 115. 230 would be 2 comma 30 and so on and so forth. They're all points that can be on a graph. Okay, let's talk about the x and the y value and I want you to think of every table, every equation, every graph that you see. I want you to think of a job and a job normally people get paid by the hour. So if you work a certain amount of hours you're gonna get paid a certain amount of money. Well if you only work one hour you only get that hour's worth of salary. So let's think of the y value, the y axis. Let's think of the y value as the total amount of money that we currently have. Okay, and let's look at the x value as the amount of hours that we work in order to make that money. All right. Well, if you take a look at our first point, zero, zero, what that tells us is that if I don't work any hours, so zero hours worked, I have zero dollars in my pocket. That makes sense, right? Okay. Well, let's look at the next set. If I work one hour, I now have made, or I now have $15. If I work two hours, I now have $30. If I work three hours, I now have 45. If I work four hours, I now have $60. And you can see how it can keep going. If I keep working, if I work five hours, you will see that I would earn 15 more dollars, which would give me a total of $75. And of course, I could keep going six hours, seven hours, eight hours. We need to have an equation that goes with this. So what I tell all my students is use this framework. Our total amount of money is equal to the amount we make per hour plus the amount of money that we start with. Okay, now remember this is just a strategy. These are not actual math terms that you guys are going to use to explain, but it's a good strategy when looking at equations and tables and graphs. I'll get to the vocabulary in a second. So our total amount of money is represented by the letter Y. We know that, we see it right here. Total amount of money that we have. The amount of money that we make per hour. That's represented by how much we are increasing by for every hour that we work. And it's easy when our X values are counting by ones because zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, it just keeps increasing by one hour. And that tells us from zero to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 45, 45 to 60, 60 to 75, that means that we're making $15 for every one hour. Well, the way that we write that is 15 over one or we could just write the number 15. Any number with one as the denominator is just the numerator. 
So we have $15 per hour. So X is the amount of hours that we put in. Now, we didn't start with anything. Our starting amount is zero. And that's what makes our equation proportional. If this starting amount wasn't zero, then it wouldn't be a proportional relationship. We can write this equation as y equals 15x plus zero, or the way that it's normally written is y equals just 15x. We don't have to put the plus zero, because if there's nothing there, we know that we started with zero dollars. Okay, let's talk about some vocabulary now. Let's look at our table first. The x value, or what we call the hours that we're working, that's called the input. That's the number that we are putting into our equation. The output is our y value. Output is what happens after we put in our time. So if I work two hours, I put that two into our equation, over here, and $15 at two hours gives us a total of 30, which is expressed right here in our table. So it's an easy way to calculate how much money you're going to make at the end of the day. Another vocab word that we're going to hear quite a bit is unit rate and slope. Unit rate and slope is located here. The 15 shows us how fast we are making money. We're making money at $15 for every hour that we work. Slope refers to more of graphing this. So if I was going to graph it, obviously after one hour, I would make $15. When we get into graphing, I'll show you that the x-axis represents our hours and the y-axis represents the money that we are making. Okay, so we've got some vocabulary under our belt, but let's take a look if the hours that we're working, what happens if they're not counting by ones? What happens then? Look at this table. We've got our x value, which I like to shorthand just write hours above it, and then the y value, which is our total amount of money. I'm gonna abbreviate that as well. And what we're going to see right away is that our total is going to be equal to a certain amount of money times our hours. And if you notice right here that we have the point zero zero, which means we are starting with zero dollars as well. So we can write plus zero or we can just leave it completely blank. We know that this table and we know that our equation is going to be a proportional relationship. Now, how much are we making per hour? Think about that. What does the word per mean? Well, per refers to one of something. And in this case, it's one hour. So if I look, my rate of change for the y value each time increases by eight. So it looks like we're making $8 every time. But wait a second. For the hour side or the x value, it's increasing by two. Well, in two hours worth of work, I'm gonna make $8. And this is where we have to figure out the change in the Y value and put that as our numerator and the change in the X value as our denominator. You're gonna be able to get our slope or our unit rate very easily.